the member for Caldwell. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'd like to uh, begin by associating myself with the contributions that have been made by many of uh, my colleagues um, on the passing of, uh, um, of, of Gough Whitlam. I want to offer my condolences firstly to the Whitlam family. Um, they have lost um, you know, a father and a grandfather, and of course um, the Australian Labor Party and indeed the broader community have lost a significant and indeed iconic figure. Um, Deputy Speaker, in reflecting on the life and times of Gough Whitlam, one cannot do so without making reference to the other half of the Whitlam whole, his life's partner, Margaret Whitlam, who passed away a couple of years ago. Um, this was, uh, Deputy Speaker, Australia's power couple, akin to the Roosevelt's, uh, Eleanor and Franklin Delano. And, uh, I thought that when I met them both for the first time as a 16-year-old schoolgirl uh, during that dramatic period after November 11 in 1975. And, of course, the passage of time has only reaffirmed my belief that Gough and Margaret Whitlam were truly a, a marriage of true minds. Uh, it's often said, uh, Deputy Speaker, that everyone remembers where they were on the day that uh, the Whitlam government was dismissed by the Governor-General, uh, Sir John Kerr. I remember where I was. I was actually in class at Year 11 at Princess Hill High School. And I remember the uproar uh, in our entire school community. Uh, students and teachers alike uh, were absolutely outraged and, uh, in our case, took to the uh, um, quadrangle, the school quadrangle, as opposed to the streets. Um, for me, this marked the beginning, I believe, of my own political activism. And like everyone else around me at the time, I felt, because such was the feeling at the time, I felt that I had to do something. I very much wanted to be a part of the dramatic events that were unfolding. Uh, the public wrath was palpable as Australians faced what many consider to be the closest we are yet to come to a coup d'etat. Um, so I uh, joined the Migrant Workers Committee at the Victorian Trades Hall Council and I ended up working as a volunteer on the election campaign to re-elect the Whitlam government, of course, in the 75 federal election. And of course, uh, Deputy Speaker, I could say that the rest is uh, history. Um, when I became, indeed became, the candidate for the federal seat of Cornwall in 2001, I wrote to Gough, inviting him to launch my campaign. Quite to my surprise, and as uh, uh, my colleague previously said, quite to my surprise, he rang me um, and uh, he actually greeted me in the Greek language. It's voice on the other end of the phone that says, Yasu Tikanis, and uh, I immediately recognised it to be Gough Whitlam's voice, and I was very surprised that he would greet me uh, in the Greek language at the time, but not really surprised, as I will mention later. Um, I invited Gough because I discovered that um, the last function he had officiated at as uh, Prime Minister of Australia was to uh, attend the opening of the Broadmeadows Sports Club in Broadmeadows in my electorate. Um, so I thought, and uh, we thought at the time, it was a great idea to uh, invite him to make a return visit to Broadmeadows, which unfortunately he was unable to, to do so because he was unable to travel at that time. But he was very gracious with his time and, as always, with advice. He had a propensity to give a lot of advice and to correct a lot of records. And uh, I know that uh, the people of Broadmeadows remain very chuffed uh, that they are but a small footnote uh, in a very important historical event. Of course, uh, in, uh, after Broadmeadow Sports Club, he, he did inform me that he went to the Melbourne Town Hall and, of course, the next day he came to Canberra where he was dismissed. Um, Deputy Speaker, if Arthur Corwell lay the foundations for modern Australia, Gough Whitlam, as Australia's 21st Prime Minister, was the architect of the contemporary Australian identity. To this end, I want to reflect on his very special relationship with Migrant Australia, or the New Australians, as he often referred to them. Gough Whitlam envisaged an Australia that was reconciled with its first people, our Indigenous Australians, and of course the memorable photograph to Vincent Lingari. He gave hope for reconciliation and paved the way for a uh, title. And to the New Australians that came here, my family and I included, Gough Whitlam embraced us in a way that gave us a sense of ownership and belonging. Uh, 
a gesture that would become the driving principles of access inequity which underlined multiculturalism, a policy that the Whitlam government not only championed but also implemented during that period of great reform. It is indeed a privilege for me to be given the opportunity to speak in this condolence motion as the member for Cornwall. Deputy Speaker, the sense of fate and history does not escape me at this moment because the 16-year-old schoolgirl of 1975 would never have imagined that she would be here today in the House of Representatives. So it's a very important moment when you look back in time. Um, Deputy Speaker, universal health, free education, land rights, the Racial Discrimination Act, ending conscription, uh, illegal aid, no-fault divorce, pension reform, multiculturalism, a new national anthem, and so much more are some of the most these are some of the most iconic policies that characterise the Whitlam government. But it's Goss's relationship with the new Australians that I want to reflect on here today, and in particular his relationship with the Australian Greek community. It was a very special relationship. Gough Whitlam was a philhellene in every sense of the word. And uh, Gough once said, and I'd like to quote him, there can be no doubt that the Greek language is important in Australia and that the Greek civilisation is important to Australia. Quote, unquote. Gough Whitlam became very involved in the Greek Australian community, from advocating for the return of democracy to its original birthplace during the seven year dictatorship of the 1960s and early 70s, to supporting Australian peacekeeping forces in Cyprus, to advocating for the return of the Parthenon marbles. He was indeed a, a true friend of Greece and the Australian Greek community. He was patron of the Antipodes Festival in Melbourne for many years. He was an honorary member of the Greek Orthodox community of Sydney and New South Wales, and he was the recipient of the Hellenic Republic's highest honour, the Order of the Phoenix, for services to Hellenism. Goff was, as my constituent, Kostandinos Turdalakis, the cantor of our local Greek Orthodox Church, says in his 18th stanza Homeric prose he wrote on the occasion of Goff's passing last week, Goff was, quote, the Greek community's second father. Um, Goff, uh, I'm absolutely certain, would love um, Mr. Tsudalakis' 18th stanza Homeric epic tribute to him, and I only wish that I could read it out in the chamber today, but I think I would be trying the patience of Hansard considerably. Um, so the affection that new Australians had for Goff, for Goff uh, is, is captured, and I want to finish with this, uh, is captured by what my late father always used to say to me. Um, he recalls that during the 1975 campaign rally in Melbourne, Goff walked past my father, he stopped and he shook his hand. My father always... Uh, he always described this. As the moment um, an Australian Prime Minister had embraced him as a fellow Australian. So, um, so there is no denying that Australia is a better place today because of